Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example of working with the cycling link macro. So as we previously seen in another video covering cycling link and sequence link, that they can work similar to what we've seen with the drop down macro. Instead of creating a drop down menu where a person would choose one thing from a list of things, we can instead create a cycling link and allow someone to choose from a set of things by continuing to click on links. And as previously discussed, there might be some use cases where we might want to instead create a drop down menu or alternatively use links. Because as we've discussed, the primary interface of working with 20 stories is already links. So that might be more comfortable for particular users or a general audience. So let's look at a seemingly complex, but somewhat simple example here. So this example has a number of things going on, but most of it concerns kind of the use of special symbols and knowledge of how macros present white space within passages. So notice I'm using cycling link and I'm again using the bind keyword we've seen across a number of videos that whenever we want to get input, we're usually using the bind keyword. We've seen it with the input macro, input box, drop down, checkbox macros. So in this case, copper, iron, or diamond, and the same with the body, and the same with the leg. At the end of all of these, I'm using a slash so it continues to the next line. I'm combining lines together. So this line combines with the next line, which will reduce the number of spaces. So this all right here, which is a little hard to see with my uh, highlighting and selection here, would all be combined into one line, and the same with the next one and the next one. Finally, we're using link rerun because I want to rerun everything each time. And I'm setting up the fence right here and combining it with the very next line. And then I'm doing something a little bit different. So we've previously covered how we, if we want to work with white space, especially if we have lots of different macros used together, sometimes we're going to collapse all that space. And the reason why you want to collapse it is because each use of a macro within Harlow creates kind of its own line, usually. So if we've got lots of macros, one line after another, after another, generally two to three, or sometimes many, many more, we generally want to collapse all that together. So in this time, I'm using curly brackets right here, or what you might call braces, depending on your previous knowledge of this symbol. And I'm going to collapse all of this. So this will all be the same thing. And it's not showing any text. It's just performing macro actions right here. And the same thing with this right here. And the same thing with this right here. So in each case, we won't see the result of that. It will be collapsed down to a single space and that will kind of save space visually when we see it. So in each case, we will present to the user the ability to choose what they want as their helmet quality, body armor quality, leg armor quality, in each case, copper, iron, or diamond. So depending on what they choose down here for the head, body, or leg, the defense will either go up by 5, 10, or 15. And then finally down here, it will say the current defense is defense. Because we are using the link rerun macro, then we can continue to choose different things and then rerun, rerun, and rerun whatever was in the associated hook, which is all of the content I had just selected right there. So this will be rerun each time, and we can then see what the new defense is, depending on what the user chooses for their armor, for their helmet quality, body armor quality, or leg armor quality. So let's go ahead and play this, and then we'll discuss how this appears. So notice the use of the collapsing white space, combined lines together. So even though it was spaced more within the passage itself, I combine those two lines each time, creates a kind of much cleaner output. So we have copper right here, and notice because we are using cycling link, we can move between them right here as we move between them. So let's go ahead and set all of these to diamond, and I'll click the result. It says diamond, 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 and a current defense is 45, which is 15 plus 15 plus 15. So that makes sense. So let's change this slightly back to copper, click it again, and now we've got 35. Notice in each case, it's showing us the corresponding result right here, each time it's rerunning that. So let's revisit this code for just a second. This is a somewhat simple example, as I mentioned, although again, the complexity is really in the collapsing of the white space, but it shows how incredibly useful the cycling link macro can be. Again, as the kind of primary interface that people use, we click links to move between passages or click links to show text, 
the cycling link can be incredibly powerful. Now, alternatively, if we would prefer, we could have also done this with the drop-down macro, and it would have worked the same. We can choose one thing from a list the same way we can do it with a cycling link macro. And in fact, all of this code down here, contained right here, would not need to change in any way. So depending on what we want, we can use the drop down, showing all the results and a user would click one of them, or we can use cycling link in the exact same way, except a user would need to show each one in turn and cycle through all the links. So useful again, giving us choices as we work with Harlow 3.3, depending on if we wanna lean a little more into drop down or a little more into cycling link. Again, the resulting code is the same, but our choices of how we make a visual presentation in our story are now expanding as we have more knowledge of what our input options are. Our ability to use input, input box, drop down, checkbox, cycling link, or sequence link, and there are others to come. Lots of different options for allowing us to create the story in the visual presentation of that story in just the perfect way to match exactly what we need as we're using Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.